A man or woman who has loyal, caring parents, reliable, true, and honest brothers and sisters, and children bonded in love and mutual regard is an individual valued, celebrated, supported, remembered, and respected. We all, therefore, need to be encouraged to work with goodwill and honest courage to value, mend, and maintain our relationships with our sons and daughters, fathers and mothers, and brothers and sisters, to stabilize and strengthen our families, and to make of them veritable pillars of the broader community. Conservatives can and should discuss and publicly and explicitly support the attitudes and actions necessary to foster such familial integration and should strive to do so in the absence of a compromising doubt or guilt. The actions necessary to unify families and make them strong in the face of adversity are fundamentally akin to those that also make for reliable, productive social institutions at levels of social organization that surround and subsume the intimate and personal. Proper and caring practice at the local level thus properly prepares us all for proper and caring practice among our friends, neighbors, colleagues, and fellow citizens. There is nothing in any of that to justify a corrosive doubt or undermining guilt. Every individual is well served and well supported by a network of friends united in good faith, aiming at the mutual good, capable of providing reassurance in times of tragedy and betrayal, able and willing to honestly celebrate in times of success and triumph. Such friendships can neither be established or sustained in consequence of dominance, force, and compulsion, but by the spirit of reciprocity and voluntary play, the hallmark of the most productive, stable, and desirable forms of human social organization. People surrounded by friends who genuinely want the best for them, but who stand by them equally during times of uncertainty, confusion, cynicism, and despair, are in a much more stable position. Existentially, psychologically, and practically, are much less likely to drown in chaos, and much more likely to maintain and flourish in an optimal order. Societies composed of individuals ensconced within such friendships are more likely to be stable, productive, charitable, and generous. Work, job, or career is socially valued productive activity, most typically a sacrifice of present impulse to the broader community and the future. Privation is the basic condition of life, and effort must be expended to address it. Work is often viewed cynically as a curse or as an indication of exploitation and victimhood, and can indeed make itself manifest in the form of degrading, unsustainable, and hopeless toil. Under optimal conditions, however, both psychological and social, work is a blessing not simply because absolute poverty can be ameliorated through effort, but because genuine and sustaining meaning can be found in a task well and faithfully undertaken. Even at the most basic level of participation in an enterprise or endeavor, work properly undertaken can offer the opportunity for genuine social contribution, the possibility of establishing lasting friendships and working relationships, the opportunity for learning and growth, personal and practical, the provision of rewards attendant upon participation in a worthwhile, valuable enterprise, and the experience necessary for informed and skillful movement forward into broader, more complex, sophisticated, productive, and generous endeavor. Conservatives, can make a case for work, can nest that case within their efforts to uphold, justify, and promote free markets, can endeavor to make the rules governing work just and fair and arranged so that commitment, effort, and merit are rewarded appropriately, sustainably, and justly.